All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the STEM Files, where we are the voice of, the, of STEM talent and Black culture. On tonight's episode, we're sitting down with Medina Mohammed, AKA the science teacher mom. She's gonna be talking to us about her business, um, the different, uh, the great things that come from being a, a homeschooling parent, especially as it relates to teaching the black child about, about science. So definitely tap in for more after this. All right, once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the STEM Files. This is the voice of STEM talent and Black culture. We highlight the best and brightest in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in our community. So I'm thankful to have um, tonight's guest on the show, uh, Sister Medina Mohammed, aka the science teacher mm -hmm. mom. Uh, before we get into that, I'm going to tell you a little, bit, a little bit about who we are. My name is Tariq Mohammed, aka Tariq Cardiac. I'm a biomedical research scientist with a concentration with a background in cardiovascular pathobiology, which is the study of how diseases form in the heart and blood vessels. And I'm typically joined by my right hand best friend, Jabrillian engineer, Jabril Mohammed, aka Jabrillian engineer. He is a mechanical engineer for the US Navy. He focuses on naval ship fluid systems and de designing all the, the fancy mechanics that goes behind that goes behind those big fancy ships you see out at sea. So he's he couldn't be here with us today. He's out on a, on a vacay enjoying himself. <laughs> but um, on tonight's show, we're gonna learn a lot about uh, how to teach the black child about science. So without any further ado, welcome Sister Medina to the platform. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Tyree. Thank you for, for inviting me to your show. <laughs> I really appreciate Excellent. it. Excellent. I see you coming live from that new space you got. Yes, I'm here in this. <laughs> I'm getting cozy down here. I love it. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So let, let's start with that. So tell us about um, the, the new accomplishment. You know, it's, it, we've seen it on social media, but tell us more about, you know, how you got to the point where you're at now and what's been the highlight so far with, with your brand. Um, so just for me, it's really been able to see a lot of children start to lighten up and li love science. I hear a lot of parents and teachers saying, hey, you know, my child is really loving science. Thank you so much for the past. Or just um, making it available to the parents has been um, probably the best part because sometimes there are parents who never really took science and they're not that comfortable with it. So they're a little bit more nervous at jumping in and, and trying to teach their child science. Very similar to math. Um, and so just being that um, handhold for them, having those guides for them, um, it just makes it a little bit more accessible. And so because of that, there's been a lot more parents who have been reaching out for assistance on being able to teach their children science. And so with the PACs, we've been growing and growing. And we started in, a, in our apartment um, and the boxes just kept coming and we didn't have space. We were doing it out of our living room from the bedroom and the hallway. Um, and it was taking, we were like living almost on all these boxes as they kept coming and coming and coming. And so right, we were like, right. we have to do something. If we're either going to grow and continue, or we're going to have to like either limit or not do it because there's, there's not enough space. And I have two toddlers who are running, everything in the house. They're coming around. They want to see what's in the boxes. They want to do everything. Um, and so we had to make a decision. And then, so we did get, uh, we decided on renovating the basement. And so we started to get the renovations done. And so we were able to at least make it um, pleasable, right? So it was, a, it was an unused basement. We couldn't use it. Um, so our first round of renovations, step by step, we were like, all right, we're going to do this in steps. That's what we can do. That's what we can afford. We're going to do it in steps. So our first step, we made it so that at least we can store stuff down right. here. So we um, got there. And then I had a friend who reached out to me about the show. And from that show, we went through a couple of rounds of like interviews. They did a, a site check and uh, they approved us based on our story. And they did a whole remodel of our of our space. Um 
and everything really was donation based where um, even behind me, like this part here is from the Moss Boss in New York, um, where he put together the periodic table, you know? So there's so much here that makes the space very science teacher mom. It's a classroom, it's a um, like a workshop, it's a place for broadcasting and teaching and it just makes the space a lot more efficient now. And so that was such, such a blessing. Right, right. And, and you, you're, you're an example and your brand is an example of when you work something hard enough and it's, it's OK if people don't see the vision at first. But when you start working the vision yourself, people are going to want to help you. You right. know, so you're you're, right. you're exemplifying that, you know, building the brand yourself and then people come flocking to you, giving you the things that you need to be successful. So uh, that that's beautiful. Uh, what, what's your background like? Is it is it in science or or was it just yeah, something so that I have that a um, I did a major my bachelor's of sciences in biology. Um, I was considering going into um, something in the medical field. I wasn't sure. Um, and then as I while I was in school, I got accepted into a full scholarship to go into teaching. They were really looking for uh, black or Spanish. It didn't matter for male or female, but black or Spanish students who wanted to go into teaching as long as you were teaching math and science. And so I was like, I like to teach, you know, let me see this out. So I went through and I got my minor in education. So my bachelor, my major was in biology, minor in education. And while I was there, I went into a program, a couple of travel abroad programs. But one of them in particular that stood out to me, we went to Tanzania and in Tanzania, we were we went uh, to about four or five women's. We established women's, um, not even women. There were girls in high school summer camps, STEM summer camps, and our goal was to try to get more girls into STEM. And so that was back before there was a lot more women in STEM. And they <laughs> right, were right. The push. So they pushed a lot of us to try to go and to be the science teachers um, and math teachers. And then while I was in school, there was a push to try to expand and to really reach these other girls to try to get them to come into the STEM field. And so that's really what we did over in Tanzania. We had these summer camps. We used everyday materials, stuff that we can find there so that they had access to science, um, whether it was using uh, red cabbage as an indicator, um, you know, like so things that they can find in their area in order to do science. Um, we had to bring a couple of things, but for the most part, we found everything there so that they knew that they can do this on their own time. And then from there, I was like, I want to do that. Whatever that is, this right. kind of science, I want to teach science right. like that. And so I am a New York City public school teacher, um, high school, ninth and 10th graders. And that's what I do in the day. <laughs> um, wow, awesome, and awesome. I teach and, <laughs> right, right. And you and um, your sister are both high school teachers? Yeah, she teaches math. Uh, like, wow, uh, wow. Like hard math. <laughs> <laughs> So, so talk about that. What, what's the what's that like having you know a sibling who's also an educator? Like, what's what are those? What are your conversations like? Um, well, she's fairly new in the game. So when she so she's about a year or two in, and so one of the things that I'm able to do is help guide her on. Um, you know, science is a little different than math, but not that different. Where at right. least she has someone where I wish I had someone you can ask all the questions in that first year. So a lot of times it would be like asking like, oh, how would you do this? Do you do this? You know, a lot of those questions of being a first year teacher. So that would be uh, most of those questions. But she teaches math to all grades and ages and she'll help me with my son in math. Math really wasn't my strong suit. I did it because I had to. <laughs> and, right, um, same. <laughs> at least so, so for her, I'm like, that's an excellent balance. She helps me with a lot of the business part of Science Teacher Mom because she's so good in the math. So we work very closely uh, together. <laughs> mm. And speaking of the business uh, side of, of Science Teacher Mom, your husband, who, who is a, 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 a <laughs> big brother of mine, I love him to death, namesake and all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brother Tariq, he is a mechanical uh, aerospace engineer, correct? Yes. And and he's been helping you a great deal with building the brand. You know, a lot of the behind the scenes lead work. So so talk about you know having your husband or someone that you've uh, come came before a lot of, to to say that this mm -hmm. is the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. You know, talk about working together as a team in a business setting. 
you know, what, what's, what's that experience like? Well, we didn't go into this knowing any of this. Um, <laughs> right. So uh, getting here, we are figuring out the best way to make sure that we're balancing both each other, our family, our children, and then the business, and then also our work schedule. So we're trying to maintain those in, in that. Um, but it's a blessing that he is here. Number one, he is in science, he is in the STEM. So he understands definitely the importance of it. He sees how much my sons have grown into science and they're two and four years old and they can reel off you know, science stuff like crazy. So it's just being in that atmosphere. Um, that you don't really understand the importance till you start to see like, oh, this is not normal. That two-year-old knows about this, right? Um, and so right. him being able to see that really got him to more back. Because in the beginning, I'm sure it seemed a little bit like a, a hobby of mine. Because I'm very like, oh, I like to do this. Oh, let's do this. Let's do this. And it was. I like to do a lot of different things. And it was a hobby. So I, when it started to get a little bit more serious and he started to back me, then I realized like this is actually getting more serious because – he's taking it serious too. So once right, he's right. Taking it serious, like, all right, so we do have some potential doing something with this. I don't know really what, I know what I'm good at, right? I'm good at maybe the science and the teaching, but like business and maybe create, you know, certain things, that's not my strong suit. And that's where I really lean on him and where I'm strong, he may be weak and vice versa. So he's the, he, he's the organizer of things. He can see things in, from spatial view, like, oh, no, this will go great. All of that, that's where he's really good. He creates a lot of systems. That's what he does at work. That's what engineers do, he says. But right. that's what he does <laughs> for me is to create systems. And that's really what um, that has been a blessing is that he is um, he's all about making sure that we are uh, happy, right? Like me and my family, that we're happy, that we have what we need. Um and he never wanted to stop me from doing it. I was like, all right, are we going to do it? We had a conversation like, all right, are we going to continue this or is it still going to stay as a hobby? And we just, you know, we decided like, all right, we're going to go all in. And that means we're going to, we, you know, we're going to grind at it together because it is a grind every, every day, whether sacrifice him for me, because he has his own businesses that he's working on. Um, so it is a lot of moving parts, but because right. we both have a lot of moving parts, I think we both understand each other. Mm, beautiful, beautiful answer. You know, and that's one of the things marriage is about is about being able to pick up uh, where someone else may may not be able to, you know, complimenting each other, supplementing what whatever it is that the other one needs and whatever in any given situation, you yeah. know. So what what has been the one of the most amazing things about having that that kind of relationship for the business? Like what what kind, what types of systems has he been able to put in place to make your your business flow easier? Well, he was the one who decided like, all right, we're going to revamp the basement and we're going to try and do the, you know, um, create the system of how to package the boxes efficiently. So that's probably mm -hmm. been like the biggest thing that we need because I was using I use the floor. I would have boxes everywhere and like just um, trying to make it work in the space that we had. And he was like, this is not going to work. He would come home and I would have the whole living room of science stuff. And he would be like, what right, is right. It? and so, so based on that, he's like, all right, we have to come up with a system. So just him being able to see it in real time and coming up with the system because he can see that I'm actually doing it. It would be late at night when the boys are sleeping. Um, or when I had a babysitter and that was really, that, that was really the only time we had to, to get some of the work done. Wow. Wow. Did you, you know, you mentioned something, um, earlier on about what's normal for a two-year-old or normal for children your age to say and to know about science. Talk about normalizing that type of knowledge for that age group, you know, cause I, I, I don't believe in you know, waiting until you get to a certain age right. to learn a certain type of science. You know, if they can comprehend at, at a certain level, let's give them all we can and see how far it takes them. So right. talk about, you know, because I've seen the videos where I think it was your oldest son who was explaining what carbon dioxide was. Right. And I thought that was incredible, you know. So let, let's talk talk more about, you know, not waiting and being able to to build them at that at that age. 
Right. Absolutely. And this kind of came still by accident. So when I had my first son, brand new mom, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to survive. And so I was home with him the whole first year. And for him, he was reading at one. So he was, so I was able to be there. And once I realized like, oh, they can learn, right? I'm learning with him how to be a mom the same way, like at every step, every month I'm learning a new part of being a mom. And so from there, I'm like, oh, they can learn. So I started to do more research on, on um, the ages of one to five and understand that their brains are so absorbent. They learn so much. They need also the, the, the contact that's important. They need the trust value and they need, and anything that as a parent, if they trust you and all, if they have those trusts, they are fed, they trust you, they love you. Kind right. of everything you say after that is kind of like God to them. It's like, oh, mom said this, right? Dad said this. So as mom, um, as long as my son was like fed, he was happy or whatever, I couldn't teach him anything. He, I would say like, all right, we're going to do uh, numbers. We're going to do our shapes. We're going to do our letters. We're going to do the sight words. And we would build from there. And he would love the time that it was. We would spend time together. We would do sight words. We would do phonics and everything like that. So starting with reading for me, um, because we uh, learn to read and then we read to learn. And that's really right. important thing to get to. Um, and of course, even if they're not reading, they can still learn, but that's kind of where you want to get them because then they'll be independent learners. And that's super, really important. So the younger that they can read, the quicker, not the maybe not the quicker, but they'll be able to learn by themselves. They can pick up a, pick up a book and say, right. oh, I read it in a book. Right. So that's kind of the first right, right. Thing. once I got um, and I understood that I was like, oh, wow, this is great. Um, then when we when I had my second son, so this is around he was about three. He was doing the quadratic formula which I did, <laughs> um, because I was studying. I was doing math for my master's degree. And he's like, mommy, what's that? And I was like, it's a quadratic formula. And then we went through it and he was he was learning it like that. So anything that really I was doing. So and when because I'm a science teacher, uh, when schools finally, when they closed in March of last year, I was like, all right, what else am I going to do? He, you know, they can read. I'm, I'm starting to get bored. It was starting to get there. We're like, all right, it's been a month now. What else can we do? And I was like, all right, I know science. Let's try and do some science. So right. from there, we introduced to them science. And since then, that first day, we, I think we did the elephant toothpaste was the first one. They've been begging and begging and begging to do more and more science. And I think that engagement aspect of making it exciting was one of the things that made it very inviting to them. So a lot of times we may be like, oh yeah, let's go play football. This is or basketball. Like it's fun and exciting, the video games. Um, but if you make science, math or reading fun and engaging, it's going to be the same thing, right? So making it entertaining and making it fun, making it a game. We use music, we use paint, uh, they use touch. They they may use the tap, but they use like um, felt toys and things that go on the walls. Our house has like it's like a classroom. Our regular house, not just down here, but our <laughs> right, right. House is like a classroom because I really wanted to make sure that they were able to absorb. So when I learned about the fact that children's brains are really absorbing everything, I wanted to make sure that what they were absorbing and what was around them was the best. Right. We want to make sure that we're settled on the best part. And I want to make sure. So around their um, their room, you will see a lot of posters that just reinforce things that we might have learned. So if they're learning Mandarin now, I may have the words with the picture. So if they're learning how to say grandma, I'll have a picture of grandma and then the word in Mandarin. So that as they're walking by, they're drinking their water, they'll look at it and remember. And the same thing with science. If we normalize it and make it normal, like, hey, this plant right. is here outside. How did it get here? Starting with right. things that they can see all the time is usually easier. Starting with like my son, when we were talking about eating, I'm like, where does your food go when you eat? And he knows the digestive system, right? Things like that, that are a little bit more, um, that they can see a little bit easier is usually the ones that I start with. And then we can go a little bit more abstract um, because we have to build from what they can see and what they know already. Building those scaffolds is really, really, I think, important. Even like for my the two-year-old, 
he follows a lot that his big brother does, but he can get it. Like he'll always tell me like now he's like, oh, and don't forget the brain. Like he has to, he knows he has to be careful about his brain and it's in his skull, right? So just teaching them also the correct vocabulary. We don't want to teach them lies. We don't want to teach them uh, the wrong vocabulary uh, because then they'll have to relearn the new vocabulary. Why not teach them <laughs> right. the right vocabulary first and just explain what it is in their terms? Um, but definitely, I think children can learn. And that becoming a mom that first time and I had that full year to spend with them, I really uh, learned so much. Like, this is actually, this is real. <laughs> you know, I didn't know. I thought it was an anomaly until it started happening to me. Like, oh, okay, if you teach it, they're going to take it. They, if they're going right. to, if they want, well, you know, that uh, they watch TV and they know all the words to their favorite show or their favorite song right we know the favorite our favorite songs too you know like if you just if it's there you're gonna learn it so i that's that's super important to me I, like hands down <laughs> wow wow <laughs> Give and, them and, thing. <laughs> right right and that's very key because you know oftentimes that's the the main reason why the sciences are so hard to get across in when you get to high school and college because of how it's taught you know but when you take these sciences, which they're, they're simple if they're taught right. So now you're taking them and making them fun and exciting for, uh, uh, how, how old is your oldest again? Four. Three or four now? Four, four. Yeah. And the And the youngest is two, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir. So we have a four and a two year old that's able to understand the things that they teach in college, you yeah. know, so it, it's beautiful. Where, where do you see them 10, 15 years from now? Uh, do you see them being scientists or? <laughs> um, my oldest son, he, he keeps saying he wants to be a scientist, but he goes back and forth between a scientist and, and an engineer because he sees his dad, he sees his mom. Right. Well, he right. has a lot to look at. Um, and he and I'm not forcing him into science. The, what I love about science and the STEM field is that one, yes, you can become a builder and a thinker, but there's so much more to the process of becoming that critical thinker and the problem solving that we need in the world regardless of where you want to go. So if I can give him the foundations that he needs to be successful in any arena, then I think I've done my job. I'm not forcing right. any science. I, I love it, but you know, everyone may not like it. And that's, that's cool. But as long as I can give the foundations and with the STEM, I find that those foundations are there, especially the problem solving skills, right? We have a global health issue that's happening now. We need critical thinking and problem solving. We have um, what's the other thing? The uh, climate change. You know, mm -hmm. there's so many issues in the world that we need thinkers, critical thinkers and problem solvers and just giving them that foundation of how to go through a problem, how to face a problem, to figure out a solution to it is, um, is really the goal here. And so for my field, it's, it's, I'm using science as the way to give them that interest in, in learning. Because, you know, sometimes it can be boring when they get bored and I don't really want them to be bored of learning. I want you to continue to learn and excited to learn whatever it is that you're learning. So it may start right now with science, then they may get into culinary, then they may jump into math then they, you know, so whatever it is that they're going to get into, um, as long as they, uh, I think, use it critically, I want them to be the best at it and, you know, really thrive and go into their own uh, whether it's their own business, um, you know, building for themselves. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Well, before we uh, continue, I want to make sure that our audience knows tonight's episode is dedicated to our uh, rap icon DMX. Um, he passed away earlier yesterday morning, and um, our prayers are definitely with his family. And may Allah grant them peace uh, during this time. DMX has pretty much was pretty much the soundtrack <laughs> to my childhood and, and a whole lot of other people in their, in their young adult life as well. So um, our fam our prayers are with him, are with his family, and we pray that uh, Allah grants them peace. Um, this is, you know, we're, we're living in a, in a pandemic. You know, we're, we are uh, told that a vaccine will get us, quote unquote, back to normal. What has been some of the the information you've taught your sons using the platform of Science Teacher Mom about the coronavirus and about vaccines in general? Well, when it comes to the coronavirus, they do understand about 
coronavirus, I had to teach them the word, what everybody was saying. Um, mm -hmm. And then that it is, it does make you sick. And this is why there's certain things that we can't do. So in the very beginning, they were like, why they, cause they used to go to like music classes and the park started to close. And so just being able to explain to them, but I still wanted to make sure that they still had their joy within them without being right. like super sad. Um, right, so right. that was one of the, the biggest things. I haven't taught them um, anything about the vaccine um, yet at all. I don't, I mean, they can absolutely learn about what a vaccine is, but for me right now, they don't need to know, they don't need to know it <laughs> for me. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not it. in their radar right now, yeah. So I have oh, not yet awesome. taught them, yeah. Okay, and that opens up opens up the question like, how do you what what are some of the methods you you use to determine um, what they would learn next? Like, is it is it something that they uh, pursue, or is it something that you you know you 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 have a, in a, a rotation? Like, they're going to learn this this month and then next month and then so forth. It's a little bit of both. So, um, so I do when I do the science boxes each month, there's a different theme, and sometimes I'll use the theme that are that's in there. And so I kind of use that kind of as the guide to go from there. But sometimes they'll ask me questions. Like when we learned about the brain, they were asking about the brain and like thinking. And so mm -hmm. that came from them, you know? So a lot of things, if they show interest in something, then I will absolutely jump and just skip over what I was going to do and go straight to where they're interested. Cause that's like, you know, you want to stay where they're actually engine, where their questions lie, because with those questions, then you can keep building and building and building from there. And then if there hasn't been anything, they're like, oh, you know, what are we going to do today? I'm like, what do you want to do? And they're like, science. It's always science. I'm like, all right, <laughs> right. what are we going to do? And they, if they're running out of ideas or they're not sure, then I'll bring in something else. So right now we're just doing more of the digestive system and the human body. Um, cause I love biology. So I usually fall back into biology and then go into, um, anything else, the harder stuff like physics. Right. <laughs> and it, it's beautiful. Cause like if Jabril was here right now, so Jabril's an engineer and I'm in the life sciences. So okay, we yeah. often got, kind of go back and forth with which one is the best. Yeah. <laughs> so if he was here right now, we'd be having fun. He'd just be sitting there like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, I usually go into you know. biology first. <laughs> if, I, if, if, if there's any lax time, I go, I'm like, all right, I can teach you enzymes, right? I can teach you about right. something in biology versus physics where I need, all right, let me think about what could be fun in physics. <laughs> you know, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. So. <laughs> what, 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 what's been the coolest thing that they've uh, reached, that they've asked you to teach them about? Like, or what's been the, the most surprising to you? Like, no. why I didn't expect that? <laughs> Say that again. Um, you're saying the most surprising that they asked me to, to teach them about? Mm -hmm. It was really when he asked me about the human body was surprising to me. Um, just because I wasn't thinking about that being a fun, hands-on activity. So I had to really go into like, oh, how do I teach the human body for four-year-olds? Um, and really think like, oh, what might be the funnest things? What, um, how can they understand what happens in your intestines? So we use like a stocking um, where it's squeezing out the food. And then, so they went through the stomach, the intestines, and then it came out, right? So they're able to know like, oh, these are the, the basic steps. Of course, I wasn't able to put in like the liver and the gallbladder, but they had the basic steps of um, the digestive system, which was really cool. Um, but one of the things that they're, one of their favorites is space. They always want to ask about space. They walk around and they uh, talk about the moon and the moon phases. The two-year-old's like, oh, it's a waxing gibbous, right? So they're just, in real time, they're just seeing what's around the world around them and is able to interact with it in a different way that I know I've never had. I learned about earth science and the moon phases when I was in eighth grade, right? Mm. And so that's totally right. different than my two and four-year-olds who's asking me like, oh, is it the waxing gibbous? And I'm like, I remember learning this. It's just so weird. <laughs> right. <laughs> that now, Man, that... Like, all right, so this is a little, you know, where else can I go? And so just being able to build and they continue to challenge me to make sure that I'm not stifling them or stopping them. So as long as I, we review and we continue on like little steps. So I'm not giving them huge chunks. They get little chunks at a time to make sure it's easy, digestible for them. Um, but they love, they love space. And the more recent new one is the human body, but they love space. That's their, their number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Wow, wow. I'm sure um, Tariq loves that as well, being uh, in aerospace engineering. And, and, and I, I've seen, you know, because he was actually on the show uh, two or three years ago, I believe. Mm-hmm. And he, he talked about, and at that, at that time, I don't think, I think it was just one at that Maybe time. <laughs> you know, right, right, right. And he talked about just the level of curiosity that uh, he had just to, just, just to learn, like, to learn about things that, like I was saying earlier, are not taught at such an early age. And the topic of the show is teaching the black child about science. How, how, what are some of the things that you uh, see are the reasons for why black children aren't as interested in science as we feel they should be? Uh, one definitely would be the early exposure. Um, mm-hmm. If it's not normal to you, how we started this talk, if it's not normal to you, then you can kind of get intimidated. You may not see it as it being cool because uh, there's so many other cool things that are around by the time that you introduce to science. So in elementary schools, science is not a main subject. I've seen it as like a special. So they may right. go one week to science. They don't have very rigorous curriculum in science in a lot of regular elementary schools. In middle school, they start to get into it a little bit. And it's like a taste in each one of them. And then high school is when they kind of like, hey, here's the major scientists. The science is now, what do you want to be when you grow up? When you did it. Right. Uh, really have time to really understand and digest it. You've got it for, you had physics for one year and you're like, all right, you don't want to be an engineer. Why not? Like, because I just started physics today. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. Um, I think uh, just they, just not having the access earlier on really is one of the big uh, stifling things that I find. And I think we just have to create that pipeline. And that's one of the things that I'm looking forward to do is, um, is creating that pipeline to the STEM careers. Uh, the same way there's a pipeline to regular jobs, right? We don't want to just bring them into regular jobs. We want the pipeline into the STEM careers, whether it's their own career that they are able to establish themselves or if they want to do something, in, you know, specifically in particular. Um, and just creating that system around that, I think, is important to start young. Um, and I think we just have to give them the opportunity to be creative, a lot of times children, when they're young, young, they're like, man, what is this? They have all these questions, right? They ask why, why, why? And if we don't have the answer, sometimes we shoot them down and we're like, I don't right. know. It doesn't matter. It's not important. Why do you care about the moon, right? Why do you care? It doesn't matter, especially if you don't know. You may be a little intimidated as a parent or a teacher if people are asking you questions and you think you're supposed to know the answer. So I think for us, just being a little bit more humble, like I don't know the answer, but we can find out, right? That's one thing I, um, that I think is is important is make sure that that us as teachers or guidance, uh, elders, older people, parents, I don't right. know, whoever it is that is around younger people is just uh, showing them or guiding them in a direction that shows that it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to make mistakes because that happens in science all the time. You're making the mistakes and then you just fix it um, or keep going until you fix it. Uh, you make hypothesis and then you try test it out and then it doesn't work or it works, right? So just um, making sure that they understand the process, like it's okay to really make those mistakes. Because I know that's one of the things I'm teaching my son is that if you don't get it the first time, you try again, right? That it's also a process. I'm I don't only want to teach them the content of science, but also the process and the skills that go along with it, because uh, that's really the thing that you'll get if you have the tools in your toolbox. Then you are a little bit better um, equipped. But if you have the tools in your toolbox and you know how to use it, then mm-hmm. you're good. You can build your own house. You're good, right? right I could leave right. you, and you're you're, you're good. So. Um, I just just making sure that we provide those tools to them younger instead of uh, waiting till they're older and saying, hey, try this out. It's a little bit harder when they're older. I get them in ninth and 10th grade and I can tell the difference between the ones who've had some earlier STEM interest or, think, you know, parent involvement a little bit different than the ones who haven't. They have no idea or it's the first time they're really seeing it. It's, it's a lot different. And when I get them in ninth and 10th grade, sometimes it's too late. Never too late, mm-hmm. but sometimes it's too late in a sense of getting that excitement. We're working double time when I get them. 
I'm like, don't you love this? This is great. And they're like, miss, not again. <laughs> but then they always, right. they're always excited. They know, they don't know if they're going to have a dead frog in my classroom or doing a lab all the time. So just making sure, of course, when I get them in high school, I just try to make that every day is going to be different. They don't know what they're going to miss. If like, all right, then you can't come to class if you're not going to blank, blank, blank. And they know they want to be there. So getting them there is extra work unless I can get them uh, when they're four and five years old. It'll be a lot easier in ninth and tenth grade when I get them. <laughs> wow. Wow. This is this is uh, amazing. We, we're 35 minutes in and, and it's been a, uh, an incredible show. And for those who are watching, forgive me for all these weird camera angles. My <laughs> tripod actually broke right before we went live. So I, I'm struggling right now to keep a good uh, <laughs> angle, but um, bear with me, family. Please bear with me. Um, my next question is, you know, we're we're talking about, you know, making sure that we are our the people that are help our stewards of our lives as children, our guardians, our our parents, that they're not intimidated by the questions that we ask. What are the questions that the children ask? Excuse me. Mm -hmm. What are some of the the what are like the top three things you would recommend to a parent to get them out of that insecurity or out of that frustration to be able to guide their child to the answers to their questions? Yeah, one I would say um, if you can plan. One of the things I did early on was I kind of planned what I wanted to put out. So if I was going to do the states of matter. I would have, um, maybe I would put the three states of matter out on the table with a balloon, a toy, and a cup of water or something like that. And you can kind of guess what questions they might ask. So if there was a part that you kind of, you know, he's going to probably ask, oh, what's this? What are we doing today? Why does it do this? Go ahead and grab your phone and do a little research beforehand. So it's not a total mm -hmm. shocker on what might be asked. And then also being transparent. So Two would be like, just be, oh, I'm not sure. Let me find out. And so my sons, right. they, I do all the time. With them. They know, like, I don't know everything at all. I'll, they'll say something I'm like, I don't know, but let me check so that they know that doing research and finding out information is normal. I don't know. So the quote is like, I don't know. Let me find out. I'll grab my phone and then I'll look it up on Google and I say, I think this is what it is. Or we'll find a video and we'll watch it together. Right. If there's something that I don't know, or I don't know how to explain or if it's something very abstract, I'll try to find a kid friendly video just so that they understand that. I don't know everything and you may not know everything, but it's OK to ask. Um, so I would say one, if you could prepare the land, the area that you want to with guiding them in that direction, in the beginning, because then you'll know their act. So if you wanted to do the human body and you had. Um, let's say the little organs or something out on the table, some toys or something, know that, okay, he's gonna wanna play with it. So because he's gonna wanna play with it and he may ask mommy, daddy, what's this? And you're like, oh, it's a stomach. What's a stomach? So just being, and then too, this being prepared and being prepared to not know and say, hey, I don't know, let's look it up. Or here's a video, because there's so many resources out there now, like there's almost no reason why we shouldn't um, be able to give the best or give something right. to them right. uh, with the answer. So it's not may not be 100%. You can press pause if it gets a little too hard, right? A little too challenging for their age group. But there's so much information out there, um, definitely for parents. And then three, what I would say, just reach out. You can reach out to other parents uh, if you don't know any teachers. I know there's if it's not like a specific science teacher, but if you want to reach out to your child's teacher or your teacher friend, because teachers, um, they don't know everything, trust me. They don't know everything, but they know a lot of how the brain works of a child when it comes to learning, like what they may find interesting or what's good for a five-year-old that may be uh, not good for a 13 year old. Right. So if you're looking for what's appropriate and age appropriate, just reaching out I'm like, hey, would you do this with a 10 year old? Would you do that? Is this, uh, you know, would this be fun for them? Just reaching out because I'm sure you might know at least one teacher in your life. There's lots of teachers in this world. And now with social media, you can just DM somebody and say, hey, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, um, you know, just make sure like it's age appropriate. I'm reaching out to somebody for help. Mm. You know, and you brought up an interesting thought. Um, Jabril and I, we had, so we're, we own a company called Original Man Scientific. 
And one of the things we did last fall was an invention and innovation workshop, and it was 100% online. And we had an age range from, I think, seven to 14. And one of the challenges that we had was making sure that they all understood what we were saying as we were saying it. And we, we did, we learned a lot. Like we learned that we can't um, <laughs> have a, a seven year old in a class with a uh, 14 year old when it comes to certain matters and certain subjects, you know? So uh, when you said that, it kind of just, you know, validated the fact that we did learn that. And that was something that we will right. uh, reassess, you know, in the future. And that's you know, what it's and, all the time. And that's, some, that's like differentiation um, in the education right. world. It's just one of those jargon where it's like, all right, you have a high student, your medium, stu your middle student, and then your lower functioning student. And in your classroom, you can't just not teach them all. They all have to be taught, but being able to um, change up the, the, the tools that they may need in order to access that information is the is really the key because they all need the same content the goal is still the same whether it's the test or the content's the same but the tools that they need to access those might be differently maybe that one of them needs to highlight a little more some maybe another one needs to be read to the directions or the reading um but just making sure that all those tools are given to the parent or to the teacher someone teaching um will be helpful for this for the student. So it's really trying to get to how can parents and students and teachers help students better is we giving the tools to the teachers and the parents to help students and children better. Right, right, right. Wow. Uh, this has been a great show for those who are watching. Um, definitely check us out on all of our social media handles. We are the STEM Files. We are the voice of STEM talent in black culture. We are live every Thursday and Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook and on YouTube. And we can also follow us for updates on anything in STEM files on Instagram at, at STEM files, the brilliant engineer, Tariq Cardiac. We're also live with National Network View on Saturday. So right now we're also broadcasting on their platform as well. It's a black owned uh, media company. You can check them out on Instagram at NNV News and on Facebook at National Network View. So definitely check them out, support them because they support us <laughs> you know so we, we're big on um supporting each other and making sure that you know black media is inclusive you know the different things that we do with each, with each other you know so one of my final questions before we conclude we're coming up on around uh 15 minutes left in the show um i want to talk about homeschooling you know jabril and i were both homeschooled uh, he was homeschooled from second grade to ninth grade. I was homeschooled from fourth to 10th grade. And the beauty of homeschooling as a, an activity for a parent to have complete control over her child's learning environment is amazing to me. You know, that along with Muhammad University of Islam or any uh, institution that, fo that fosters the, the, the opportunity for the black child to not only learn knowledge of self, but learn a, a way that will make them, you know, successful in life with whatever, anything that they right. uh, choose to pursue. So back, back to the pandemic, you know, we ha we're having um, a situa situations where parents will have to build a learning environment in their home because of the school shutting down, you know, and now that we're, they're trying to get back into school 100%, you know, homeschooling is still that topic, like, okay, you know, how do I do this? <laughs> Why me? Like, you know, a lot of parents are just, you know, frustrated, you know, about that, having to do something like that, something that they've never imagined them, themselves having to do, you know? So what, what are some of the things you would recommend to them? You know, the, the, those parents who are unhappy with the current situation on, on, or just not being prepared to teach their children or knowing how to teach their children? What, what would you say to them? All right, one, I would say that it is difficult, especially um, the way that it happened, right? It was kind of like thrown at you. Imagine a brand new right. family, it's like, here, there you go. Um, right. So one, it is, it is difficult. Um, but one of the things I would say is that there are so many resources out there and to utilize those resources. And one of the positives or the upsides of what is happening is that because there are more things that are virtual, um, 
it's really bringing the the world to be a smaller place uh, because you can be in contact with so many different people around the world at different times, um, taking classes in different languages, uh, different subjects, using teachers that you probably didn't have access to before because of location. Um, right. So I would say like to be resourceful using that and understand too that as a parent, you are given everything that your child needs in order to survive and to thrive from the breast milk that you were given at birth, the, the child, That's right. that the, the breastfed child, every time that they would suckle, um, the mother would produce more milk. When the child was sick, the milk contents changed and just how the world is changing around us. Um, I think it's important for us to realize as parents that we have everything that our child needs, regardless of what's happening in the world around us, and to trust that instinct. And with that instinct, just you know, keep going. You know that you're going to give them the best that you can give them. Um, so don't be like, don't be nervous or afraid, but do reach out for help. Because um, I can only imagine if it happened. I just happened to be a teacher, but I can only imagine if someone threw me in. Um, in a welding room and they said this is what <laughs> right. you have to do now i don't know you figure it out and i would be panicking <laughs> but so i can only imagine that so but do understand that you do have everything that your children need but to definitely reach out to the teachers that you might um you might know in your life and know that there are so many resources that you can still give your child the best that is out there um and it's there's there's just so many resources. I've I've been able to research and find so many resources with whether it's like science camps, there's STEM camps, there's even like language, and uh, there's ways there's people who also help you um, figure out how to use nature in um, in and around your classroom. So if nature is all you have, right? Because you're you're let's say you live in a small apartment and you don't have a lot of space inside, you can use nature as your classroom and just utilizing what you have, I think is one of those things that um, we, we, we have, we have it. We have all the resources. We've learned how to survive like that. We've made uh, the best foods from the worst parts. We, that's what we do. And I think just right. trusting the instinct um, will be okay in this time. Right, right, right. Well, you know, we, we are, um, coming up on the end of the show and first and foremost, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, so we've been trying to get you on the show, show <laughs> for a long time, <laughs> you know, and I'm thankful that we were finally able to, um, chop it up about, uh, science teacher mom. But one of the things I wanted to ask you, and this is actually, so there's a whole bunch of stuff I'm going to ask you, but it's, it's like a, a question wrapped up into one and we, okay. we have a special segment at the end of the show. Okay. Um, what is the number one thing you've learned as a business owner? Mm. You know, you're, you're an educator, you're, you're, you're a scientist, but as a business owner, what are some of the things that, that stick out to you? Um, I learned how to outsource, I would say, more outsourcing, because I, I know I don't know a, a lot about business. I know what I know, and I know what I don't know. And so being able to outsource and understand what I don't know as a business, uh, a new business person um, was a lot of growing things. Because I'm someone I would do it all, like teachers and mothers, they usually do a lot, just cut, that's just what happens. And so as a business person, if you want your business to succeed, you really can't do everything and you can't do it all, especially if you want to like take a nap or sleep sometime, you can't do it all. <laughs> um, so that's one of the things that we've been learning is how to uh, better outsource and um, find the appropriate help to help in the segments where we are lacking. Mm. That's, uh, and I, I bear witness to that, finding the appropriate help you know, just because they, you know, it, you could have a million, <laughs> you could have a million molecular biologists in the room, but only right. one of them will want to help with coronavirus. You know, right. just, you can't just rely on their background. You can't just rely on, you know, what, what, what it is that they know they have to either want to help or know, or know how to help for that particular task that you're working on. Right. You know, so every everybody, you, you just can't grab on everybody. You know, that yeah. it's, it doesn't work like that. And I learned that the hard way starting out. <laughs> like, I was always like, okay, great. You're an architect, help me out. 
your uh, virologist helped me out. No, <laughs> you can't. You can't do it like that. So I, I, I definitely um, bear witness to that. And so at the end of the show, we have this thing called the STEM file speed round. And it's a bunch of random questions that we throw at you as fast as possible. And you have to come up with whatever you can, and, you know, and this is just the way we get to know our guests outside of uh, okay. the topic. So you ready for it? Sure. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. What's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Brush my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. cool. <laughs> All right. So this, 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 this next question is like, where me and Jabril kind of like butt heads a little bit, you know, he, he's an iPhone user. I'm an Android user. So uh -huh. just, you know, be careful how you answer. <laughs> All right. So iPhone or Android? Nowadays, iPhone. Okay. <laughs> nowadays, why, did you say, iPhone. why did you say nowadays? In high school and through college, I was Android all the way. I did not want to change. I didn't want to change. Then when I got on a family plan with Tyreek, when I got married, we went team iPhone, and that was it. I'm like, now so he I'm converted you to the laptop. iPhone. Right? It's connected <laughs> my laptop to the iPad to everything. <laughs> my God, I, I have been my my wife has been an iPhone user for I want to say five six years now, and yeah. that has not convinced me to join over. I I will never abandon. <laughs> The Android side. I don't care what. I don't care if they. they I, like I, don't, <laughs> I don't care if they come out with a phone that you could use to teleport from like your house to work. I don't care what they do. I would never leave. <laughs> All right. Cool. Cool. All right. So if you were trapped on a desert on a on an island, right, and you only had like three albums, music albums, mm -hmm. what would they be and why? Um, Indie Re. Uh, what's the name of the album? Can't remember the album because I listen to it all the time. But the first I, one? Uh, actually, I think it's my own playlist, so maybe it's not. It's all okay, her songs <laughs> on one playlist, but it's, mm -hmm. it could be between the first and the second one, or testimony, or something like that. But because it just speaks, it speaks everything to me, and that's when like I'm in like a, I need to relax Zen mode. Lauren Hill, The Miseducation, mm -hmm. love that right. one. I Classic. I'll tell you all the words and her other I, that one I was uh, using when I was in labor with my son. It was everything, so I'll never forget any of those words. And um, maybe Bob Marley. I like his album. Okay. Those are like the three I may pick up when I'm uh, need something <laughs> that I refer to right. that make me feel okay. at home and cozy. <laughs> <laughs> about gotcha, my gotcha. Me remind me of my dad and feeling home and cozy <laughs> right 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 we need that, that was those vibes to get us through <laughs> definitely definitely all right cool so if you could meet any scientist or engineer from the past alive or or, or deceased who would it be hmm. alive um uh, may jemison okay dr may jemison definitely i just thought she was so uh, so cool and like she was just well rounded. She did so much, and it just showed the how dynamic a a female, a black female, can be in what she wants to do. Um, from like, and be good at it, from dance to doctor to going to space. I always thought I was gonna go to space when I was younger, um, but just like just everything. I just thought she was so cool in that that you can do a lot of things as well as be smart. Right, a lot right. of things you right. like. Oh, you're either smart or you're not. It's like it's not black and white. You can be smart and be a model if you want. Right, you can do so much. <laughs> yeah, I always thought it was cool that she was both a, a physician and an astronaut. And an astronaut. That, yeah. That that to me was just you know incredible because usually when they when they ask you you know what you want to be when you grow up, you got to pick yeah. one. And right. if you pick a whole bunch of things, they look at you like you're crazy. Yeah. You know so. When she was all these things wrapped up, up wrapped up into one, I always enjoy reading her story and, and right. learning about you know how she got to where she is now. So right. she's definitely a big inspiration for me as well. All right, cool, cool. So my name is Medina Muhammad, and I am a mom. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, family, you know this this has been. The STEM Files, where we are the voice of STEM talent and Black culture. I'm going to do a couple promos real quick before we end it. I'm going to ask you one last question to close out. 
Okay. For those who are interested or those who want 100% uh, truth and you want it to come from your people and your community, check out the Final Call newspaper. This issue, this week's issue is under the shadow of death in regards to um, George Floyd's uh, murder trial regarding the officer that held his knee on the back of our brother's head until he was no longer uh, conscious, Derek Chauvin. So definitely uh, check out that uh, issue of the Final Call newspaper. Um, and our next show involves Dr. Janet Antwi. She is a medicinal chemist, and her specialty involves uh, the development of therapies for HIV and AIDS. And next Thursday, April 15th, we're going to be talking about is there really no cure for HIV and AIDS? We're going to be unpacking the science of HIV and, and AIDS and understanding why this uh, disease has garnered the type of attention it, it garnered when it first came out and whether or not our government scientists are telling the truth about this particular uh, disease. So definitely check that out. Thursday, April 15th. Uh, 2021 at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, same place, uh, Facebook, YouTube. So definitely check that out. But once again, thank you, uh, Sister Medina, for joining us on the STEM Files. Uh, yeah. It's been an honor to have you, um, an honor to have you add value to our platform because this, this platform will be nothing without the things that you and others have done in science and in, in STEM in general in our community. So what are some of the closing things you like to leave the audience? What What are some some take home messages? Um, I would say start your children young, and even if they're not your children, um, there's children in our community. There's children uh, maybe in your family, um, and by touching their lives, you're really affecting the future. Uh, it may seem a little far, but it's it's really not. You hear the term "time flies." Um, and especially when children are young, they really are absorbing everything. So I would say if you can start as young as you can, um, uh, affecting, influencing children around, especially they need the good influences to outweigh the bad influences. And if you are, are there being a good influence, that please, please do that. Create this community and this world that we want by um, influencing them the right way. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and how can, for those who want to get more involved in what you do or get a, get a hold of some of your products, as a matter of fact, what, what, is, what are some of the flagship products that uh, Science Teacher Mom produces? Um, so right now we have a homeschooling um, subscription box, science subscription box for uh, ho newer homeschooling parents, but uh, homeschooling parents and uh, homeschooling teachers as well, teachers who are teaching from home. And it really is uh, more like it's becoming me being the lab teacher for your classroom. And so if you can imagine, the lab is where they're doing the hands-on experiments and they're really touching and feeling what science is all about. And so it's really a nice supplemental activity that they can do along with whatever else that you are doing with them. So this month in particular, uh, my students are all learning about the human body. So they may have science three days a week and they may do the lab on Fridays or they may spread out the labs throughout the week, kind of depending on how much their times are or parents do it at their own pace. They may do it on Tuesday, one week, Saturday, you know, then Thursday, the following week. So it's very flexible. There's videos that come with it for uh, the parents who may not uh, understand really um, how to do the activity. It's step-by-step -step videos on how to do the different activities with the lesson plan and worksheets that come with it. And then the materials that are in the box um, just make it easier so that you don't have to go out and grab all the stuff that you need in order to complete the lessons. And I know that's one of the difficult parts when you go to sit down to do something and you're missing something and then you can't do it. Then you're like, all right, I have to go to the store. You may start doing something else and then you never get back to it. You have the materials that just makes it a lot easier to um, complete the activity or the lesson. And so from there, we're just creating these uh, science packs. It makes it easier for parents to introduce to their children science concepts that sometimes they may not get until they're a little bit older. Um, and I tell people all the time, like, I'm doing this with my four-year-old and my two-year-old, but it's definitely tiered up. Um, 
for, uh, I go up to about fifth grade and then I have a something separate for my uh, middle schoolers, but it is tiered for K to five and there's two different sections. So you'll see an elementary section, an early learner section, and then there's a middle school section. So it's three different age groups that we uh, work with. Okay, awesome. And how can people contact you? Um, and you can find me on scienceteachermom.com. That's my email address, scienceteachermom at emac.com or on Instagram, scienceteachermom. Great, great. Well, once again, <laughs> thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, we would love to have you back on the platform. And there are some things that came to mind. Matter of fact, I had reached out a few months ago and I forgot to follow up. So uh, there's, there's some products I have in mind to kind of go along with your, uh, your kit. So I'll definitely be in touch on that. Um, but yeah, for those who are watching, this is once again the STEM Files. We have the voice of STEM talent and Black culture. Thank you all for tuning in. Peace and blessings, everyone. Mm -hmm.